Hi, Electron John here. And today I want to talk a little bit about state emissions testing programs. Um, lots of times people refer to them as smog tests. I've had a couple comments about asking why some states have the emissions testing mandated and other states don't. What's all involved in the emissions test in general. Um, why certain states have only certain areas of the state have to go ahead and get their vehicles inspected for exhaust emissions testing. So there's a lot of questions there. I want to start off by saying that emissions testing in general is really nothing new. It's been going on since in some cases, you know, the 80s. And it's just kind of evolved over time. And on older types of vehicles, vehicles that are older than 1996, they did not have what we called OBD2. And for all you subscribers, there's an OBD2 video on my channel. You can feel free to watch that to get a pretty good understanding of what OBD2 is. It stands for Onboard Diagnostics. So the earlier vehicles, however, I kind of call that the Wild West. Each and every manufacturer were allowed to pretty much do whatever they wanted as far as computer controls go. So in those types of vehicles, we had the ability to do what was called an IM240 test as the various types of testing has evolved. So I don't want to go all the way back to the beginning because all those cars are probably in the salvage yards at this point and everything. But the IM240 test, that was a very good overall enhanced emissions test. The 240 stood for 240 seconds, which means you would have your vehicle, the older types of vehicles, you'd pull it up on a dyno and you would actually drive the vehicle simulated, you know, driving at idle, driving under load, um, going uphill, downhill, cruising speeds, deacceleration, and it tested the emissions. So why were the emissions tests mandated? It all goes back to what type of pollutants are in the air. So in theory, I'm, I live in Ohio, and in theory, the way Ohio's emissions testing program, currently called the E-Check program, um, the way how that was mandated was we had air quality testers located throughout the state. And if the air quality test failed, then those surrounding counties had to go ahead and apply by getting their vehicles emissions tested. Now, some of you out there are probably very frustrated because you know, if you, if you can't get license plates or can't renew your, your actual vehicle registration because you failed an emissions test, you may be saying, well, you know, there's buses out there that pollute the air more. Um, I drive down the freeway and I see these big smokestacks from industry, you know, polluting the air. You know, what do they got to do? It's, it's overall better for the state to approach the vehicle's emissions than it is after industry, big industry. Because if that big industry decided, hey, well, we're just gonna close this plant in this particular area because the air quality is too dirty and we'll move to someplace else, we'll probably get tax credits and everything else where the air is clean, then we lose a lot of jobs. So that's why the EPA kind of centered around attacking the transportation industry. Now I know it's not 100% fair. You know, I'm not here to try to sell you on it. I'm just here to give you an overall explanation to answer the questions that I get about emissions testing in general. It's not 100% fair because not every single vehicle necessarily has to be tested. So if the vehicle is a commercial vehicle in some manner it, in the state of Ohio, you could go ahead and bypass our emissions test. So that we call them getting truck plates, so to, so to speak, or commercial truck plates. So, you know, there's, there's loopholes around it. And a lot of times there's hardship cases involved so that if you have a vehicle that needs, you know, $1,500 worth of repairs to get it to pass an emissions test, well, then you can apply for a hardship waiver and you attempt to spend $300 in an attempt to fix whatever is ailing the vehicle that's causing it to pollute the, the air. And you'll get a, a temporary pass that's, which is good for one cycle. So in Ohio, that's good for two years. So the next time you have to renew your plates. So there are different types of scenarios for hardship type of complaints and stuff. But overall, we went from the IM240 test, which used a, an official five gas analyzer stuffed inside the tailpipe and 
actually doing loaded dyno testing, simulating driving cycles, to actually get a very precise type of measurement to the newer type of system, which is pretty much all OBD2 based. The way how the Onboard Diagnostics 2 computer system works is if you are polluting the air, if, you're, if you are exceeding the federal test procedures, FTP standards, by more than one and a half times, then it's going to turn a check engine light on, which is why a lot of times you may pull up to your emissions testing facility and you'll maybe see a sign or somebody will ask you if the check engine light's illuminated. If it's illuminated, then you automatically failed and they're not even probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and test your vehicle. They're gonna tell you to go out and get it, get it repaired and bring it back once the check engine light's off. Now that OBD2 system is smart enough to know that hey, you can't just erase the codes and then immediately go get an emissions test because it forces every monitor to run at least once. So the continuous monitors only have to run once. The non-continuous monitors, again, we got a whole video on OBD2 that you can watch at your leisure. Those are forced to run twice. And every time they run, they have to get a passing test result. So is it 100% fair to require certain areas of certain states or certain states across the country to do emissions testing? Well, it depends on which side of the fence post you're on. You know, if you are breathing dirty air in that area, if the emissions testing air quality testers are actually reading that the emission quality is too high in that area, then yes, it, it's 100% worthwhile. Um, is it a pain in the butt to have to take your car to get an emissions tested and then if you happen to fail that, you got to spend a bunch of money even though your car may still be running, you know, perfectly fine in your opinion. You know, is that, you know, a pain in the butt to actually do that? Uh, it is, but overall it's better for the quality of the air that we're all breathing. So we only have one planet that we all have to live on and we want to make sure that we can sustain life on this planet as long as possible, which is why these programs are in place. So are there ways to trick the emissions testing? You hear about it in the news all the time. There's some crafty individuals out there that do it. It's 100% illegal to actually go ahead and give some type of false type of test results and pass cars or do work on cars that's not needed. So you know, there are some, some instances where that happens, but if you happen to have a vehicle that is failing an emissions test, I sympathize with your frustration because it's not a good time. You know, it's going to at least cost you some time and some money to actually get this vehicle repaired. So hopefully this answers a lot of the questions that, you know, the do-it-yourself market may have about what's all about the emissions testing, whether your state calls it a smog test or a, some type of individualized type of testing name, which is in Ohio's case called the Ohio E-Check. Um, one last thing I kind of want to throw out there, there are two different types of tests out there. One is centralized, one is decentralized, which basically means if you happen to see this on your test report or you get an actual letter or notice from the DMV, what that basically means is, is the shop itself able to do the actual testing or do you have to take it someplace to get the test done? So this would be a decentralized um, location where you can actually go through and you can drive on out to a testing center or a testing facility and actually have a state approved facility do it. Those scenarios are a little bit more up to par, I would say, because they have no skin in the game. Right? So they're, you're taking your car there, they're not fixing your car, they're not telling you how to fix your car, their one and only purpose in life is to actually test the vehicle and see if it's actually passed or failed. Um, the ones that can do it where they have some skin in the game where they could possibly go ahead and maybe make some extra revenue by telling you that you need certain services done or whatever the case happens to be, those are the ones that are usually the ones that are in the news that you hear about, you know, maybe not 100% up to par. But overall, the emissions testing, in my honest opinion, is a good thing. Um, is it 100% fair? Can it be, have some, you know, improvements to it? You know, I'm the first one to agree with you that it, it is, it can be improved in some, some minor aspects. But overall, it does do a great job for, the, for our air quality that we breathe. 
and it does a great job with actually making sure that the cars on the road are, are kind of safe overall. You know, a lot of these emissions testing facilities will not test your vehicle if for some reason you got a very low brake pedal or something along those lines. You know, it's not a safe um, atmosphere to test your vehicle in and probably you shouldn't be driving the car with a real spongy brake pedal in the first place. So, you know, overall I think it's, it's good for the environment and I think it's good for overall traffic safety in general. So hopefully this answers some of your questions. If you have more specific questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer the questions to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching.